Director. I want to call to order the uh, special work session of December 17th, uh, 2012. And uh, before we proceed on, uh, we've got a couple of things that we want to chat about and just brief you on. And we do have one public comment that we're going to make. Uh, but uh, all of us are aware of the tragedy that occurred at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut uh, recently. And we're all very distraught and saddened by that occasion. And we realize that there are families who have uh, children in our schools that are uh, afraid and concerned and uh, curious about uh, what our police department does, our county sheriff's department, and how our schools plan. And uh, we had the opportunity this afternoon, uh, Mayor Anderson uh, called a meeting of uh, uh, many of the school uh, board officials, um, uh, police chiefs from all across the area. Um, uh, Mr. Stuckey was there uh, to uh, discuss um, many of the things that are already in force to keep our schools safe and also uh, to develop a plan going forward uh, to uh, ensure that our children are kept safe. Uh, at the present time, uh, there is a heightened awareness by uh, our police force with uh, a presence uh, around the schools. Uh, you'll see them uh, uh, drop off and pick up times now, and those officers will be also uh, going through the schools as we uh, explore what options uh, we want to take in the future as far as continuing to make sure that our children are safe. Uh, tonight at 7 o'clock there will be a, at the school board meeting, uh, Williamson County School Board meeting, there will be a, a special uh, news briefing that will occur uh, sometimes around 7. And so additional announcements will be made there as we um, plan and work around a very uh, sensitive issue to all of us. Uh, Eric was there, and uh, <coughs> feel free to make some comments if you'd like. If there's something I left. Not not a whole lot to add, except for um, you know we we all are uh, mindful of it. Uh, there's been a lot of preparation that happens, uh, but we're also looking at what preventative measures, uh, in addition, can be put in place to to help keep schools safe. Um, you know, there, there's been dialogue with both Williamson County Schools and Franklin Special School District about where we go and what we can do. And those uh, discussions will continue uh, and, and lead to, I'm sure, a series of recommendations that we will all look at it at some point in, in the near future. Uh, we are, as the mayor said, using uh, our directed patrol and on-duty resources to do additional, to show additional presence at pick up and drop off, going through schools, being present, and, and just uh, helping with that. A couple years ago, we did add a school resource officer to work specifically at uh, Poplar Grove School and uh, Freedom Middle School. So uh, we're looking at where we put resources and how we can be best uh, serve the whole of the community, but especially help keep our schools safe. So uh, that will continue, and we'll keep you informed as we work on that issue. And, and um, you know, there'll be some more discussion tonight about just generally where we're going as a, as a community and, and taking all the steps that we can to, to try to address those kind of security issues and concerns in our schools. Great. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, one citizen comment tonight, Mr. Dreyer. Uh, if you'll come up, and we're going to give you uh, five <coughs> minutes, and I'll be, uh, uh, let's see, why don't you sit right here, okay. uh, and uh, we'll give you five minutes. We've got some pretty important other business to take care of tonight, too. So just <laughs> sit down and give your name and uh, address for the record. And I'm Ted Dreyer at 1323 Barkley Lane, Franklin here, and I feel the gravity of what we're uh, our nation is facing right now as founder of the Children's Kindness Network. We're a 14-year-old nonprofit that uh, our mission is to stop bullying before it begins by teaching kindness values to young pre-K children through Moosey the Cow. And some of you may have read the article in the Williamson County Journal about two, three weeks ago about Moosey the Cow talking to kids about kindness. But that's not my issue. I've got a trivial issue compared to the loss that we saw in Newtown. And my issue uh, is that uh, a sewer bill 
and uh, my wife and I go to Colorado every summer for three months. And uh, this summer, our meter on our sprinkler system decided they'd get a hiccup. Instead of our water billing bill being about $25, it's 325 So the neighbor called to say, I don't know, I'm appreciating the water, but the water is running down the sidewalk past my house. We're four houses down. And uh, all I'm asking is this. It's real simple. My water bill is $325. The water was 170 the sewer bill was $121, and all I'm asking is that the sewer bill be taken off of my water bill because obviously there was no one there, and it's real simple, and um, that's it in a nutshell. Now, and just while I've got your attention, the other thing is that I know there's an alternative, you know, also for having your uh, sprinkler system on a separate meter. But that separate meter here in Franklin costs uh, $3,931. And this very night at, at, uh, at uh, Spring Hill, the city council is voting on their meter cost. It's currently 1000 and rumor is they want to reduce it to 750 So that would make it more workable to have a system like that. And uh, I'm not asking you to give me, I'm not asking you to give me uh, off, get off of the fact that we used that much water. I'll pay for the water. The neighbor appreciated it. And a couple of trees are growing bigger. Uh, but the sewer bill, I'd like to have you moved if possible. It just seems fair. And that's it. That's okay, three so and a half minutes. And thank, thank you very you. much thank for you. your time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank Merry you. Christmas to you. Thank you. And there will be some kind of follow-up with for him or with him or from, from the office yeah we can follow up I and mean, I've talked to mr. dryer before okay. our policy does not at this point allow for an adjustment for a sprinkler malfunction we do it for leaks so that's the question if you want us to do something beyond leaks because that's a little different animal when the sprinkler system uh, malfunctions so that's the direction I need from you to do something different than the policy you've directed. One question, Mr. Dwight. Were you in the house when this was, were you all out of town? Yeah, well, like so you were not flushing? We were gone for three solid months. So every summer we pay the sewer bill and the trash pickup and yeah. all that, but we don't okay. usually those are the uh, finished up online business. Mm -hmm. here. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we're ready for a discussion regarding update of debt capacity models. And I think they're working on that. We're getting connected. Uh, this is a follow-up specifically related to uh, the Carruthers South project. And uh, the charge was to take those options and look at them and apply them to our financial model and also update our financial model. Because we've been able to uh, bid uh, most all of the items that are on in your capital plan and that were in that funding plan so we can replace some of those projected costs with um, with at least bid numbers and have a better handle on where we are and how things are really coming in versus what we thought they'd, they'd be and it also updates our financial performance from the last fiscal year uh, the refinancings we've done uh, all these different elements all come together to give you a, a picture of where we are snapshot of where we are today uh, relative to the projects you've already approved and help <coughs> provide a framework for any decisions you want to make around Carruthers going forward uh, and again we've we've done almost the complete design and there's just a little bit left to do to be ready to bid the project whether it's in phases or in whole uh, and so we're just looking for that direction at whatever time you're comfortable providing it and uh, wanted to share that information with you I think we'll start with um, going through the, the finan financial information and the update of the debt capacity model that has taken place we've got Lauren on the line is Lauren available to us hi Lauren hi how are you doing great I hope everybody can hear you all right. <laughs> well, I, I will say I'm on speakerphone as well, so um, bump it up. initially does it sound okay? Can you guys hear okay? Can we put her up full screen? Um, um, I think she's it. Just her presentation, yeah. okay. we will appreciate that she's up in the corner there. That way you can see her slides, actually. Okay. All right, I, th I think we can hear you. We'll. Uh, Listen as closely as we can. Russ, do you have any uh, opening comments, or we want to? No, I was just going to say in? I asked the question about could we make her a little bigger on the <laughs> screen, but, but then we'll lose the slides, and she's going to go through all of the oh, slides, okay. I think, and, and do the description. So, Lauren, the floor is right. yours. 
Okay, good. Well, I'll ask Eric and Russ as you are there live. There actually looks like there's a little bit of a different setup since the last time I'm there that certainly stopped me. Um, as, are we still good? Yes, yes. you're fine. I'm getting it certainly fine. stopped we're getting the microphone You're a fine. little closer yeah. to you. I've got a new job, microphone adjuster, <laughs> boom operator. Yeah. Or grip. Well, I will say I can't see all of you. I can see a few of you. Um, so certainly someone who may need to raise their hands. I can see Alderman Peterson in red, so she may be, have to be the one to flag me down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind it. Your questions too. So that's great, isn't it? <laughs> But I do appreciate you all working with me. I'm actually at a PSM meeting um, for a wrap-up of the year end. So, but nonetheless, um, I'm going to go ahead and share my desktop. Jay or um, Russ, if anyone has any problems and they can't see it, please let me know. Looks good so far. And this is what's in your packet. I don't think we've changed it at all. So go ahead, Lauren. Okay, very good. And I will do my best to zoom in a little bit so it's visually easier for those um, uh, watching the screen. Um, but I don't want to cut off any material. Um, but nonetheless, I, I will do my best to accommodate visually what you all need. Um, I think Eric started giving you all a little bit of an update as to what we have spent the last few weeks working with Russ and Eric and their team to update the model with, of which the actual 2012 numbers, revenues, and expenditures have been updated. Um, just a little bit of a summary of what that means in terms of uh, numbers. The total revenues are slightly less than we originally forecasted when we last did this presentation to you all in April of this year. At that point, we were relying on the budgeted 2012 numbers, and now we have the actual numbers in, into the model. Uh, Revenues and expenditures are both slightly less than um, we had in the budget, and therefore that was the information that was presented to you in April. Um, we ended the year with revenues exceeding expenditures, and in fact there was a deposit to the general fund balance, and no use of fund balance for 2012. We accounted for the city's refinancing that they did earlier this year to take out a piece of variable rate debt in which a, a, a rate was budgeted higher than what we had borrowed at a 217, I believe, was the rate we actually borrowed at um, when we did that refinancing earlier this year. The general fund is higher than we originally forecasted from the budget numbers in April when we presented to you, and that speaks to the deposit to the, the reserve fund at the end of the fiscal year. And also, population is slightly higher than we had originally forecasted because we assumed a 2% growth rate, and actually the census numbers came out just a little bit slightly higher than what we were projecting the population to be. We have also accounted for the approved budget numbers for fiscal year 13, revenues and expenditures. Those are also slightly less than we originally had forecasted um, in April because those numbers for 13 grew off of the 2012 budget. We have also accounted for actual construction bids that have been received for the projects that we will speak to later in the presentation. Those numbers have been translated from administration to us and we've now accounted for them in the model. Any questions? I have, a, I have a question where it says actual 2012 revenues and expenditures uh, were, uh, were used, but on that very last page, it looked to me as if in 2012, th as I say, this is, and we, get, we can get to when we get to this, it looked like it used the 52867000 instead of the actual. I'm so sorry. It's on the very last page of your presentation. Are you not hearing her, uh, Lauren? I'm sorry, I, can't, I can't hear her. I'm, she's just too far from the speakerphone. Is it mm. oh, is this, this page or page? that? No, it's the very last page that we have. And okay. this number. That's the attachment. She's going to have a lot of questions. You need to move yeah. up. Yeah, why don't you come up here? Yeah, sit right here. We're going to move Ann closer so uh, she'll be closer to the speakerphone. She's oh, saving her voice for the key. Titans game tonight. <laughs> we hope we have something to go with. That's the truth. <laughs> 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 
Uh, Lauren, what I was saying was that on the, I, I suppose this is on the uh, addendum or the attachment A, on the very last page. I think I have an answer for you on that. Okay. Uh, it, did, had, it had the 2012 had the old number on it. I think I, and this is my fault, I attached for additional information this background detail, and I think I used an earlier version that had the 52-8 number. The actual number is in there with what Lauren ran. So I, I gave you background, and I did an earlier version. Okay. Uh, 52? Yeah, with that it's 52. Earlier. So it's really, for expenditures, it's like 49 million, right? Lauren's presentation ends on page 10. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, okay, and, and that's 50, <laughs> uh, 50.9, well, wait, no. Yeah, yeah 50.9. Maybe for the sake of continuity, let's let Lauren proceed right. and uh, we'll keep her questions and uh, jot them down unless there's something that's earth shaking that somebody's got to ask. J just to address that though, if you look at page eight, you'll see numbers that say estimated general fund budget under 12, that has 50.9 million. Page eight in the presentation. Oh, the only have the number of pages down to forward. Now look at, look at the presentation. In front of that, in front of that, yeah, page, yeah. I'm looking at this on, uh, Go. down through page four. Keep going. But I don't have any others that are numbers that I see. Keep going. After those, yeah, after that, yeah, that okay. one, that one, yeah. I'm oh, sorry, the saying? ones in front, the two or three in front of that don't have numbers, but this is okay. the. Now, what are you saying about that page there? The two from the, that has those numbers, and you'll look at that general fund budget number, mm -hmm. that 50.9 million Mm -hmm. That's what Lauren used. That's oh, okay. the updated number she That's used. The so the detail that I put in in the appendix had an earlier number, which I think may have been a projected number as opposed to the, the audit number or whatever. Number. Yeah. So you're so saying that. the 50,000, The 50 million, the, the 50.9 million. Is That's really an actual instead of a budget. All right, but nice. it's actually revenue, and I think those numbers were supposed to be based on expenditures, if I'm not mistaken. But at any rate. Uh, Whenever we get to that, I'll, I'll say something about that. Okay. But thank right. you. Proceed, Lauren. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm just back to the page in which two. Okay, page three. Okay, additional updates that were made to the model, which I spoke to a little bit, are related to the actual project that this, the board approved. A lot of you have probably seen these projects and you know them probably all by heart. Um, the only thing I would, think I would point out is the fire station seven and eight and, and Russ and Eric, let me know if I have this wrong. We had originally only included the design work. We have also accounted for some construction fund costs. However, those are being offset and paid for out of a facility tax and there's no debt being assumed for those projects, for that particular project. That's correct, and actually at this point, the board has only authorized the design services for those two fire stations. We, we expect to pay for it out of facilities tax, but it's not been uh, approved or bid or anything yet. So that's kind of still out there, but you're right, it's, it's outside of a, a debt, a debt funded uh, project. Correct. And the other place that I would draw your attention to is, I guess, the, the fourth dash on the bottom, which is Carruthers Parkway. And I have a little note out to the side that says that we've actually ran three different scenarios on this particular project. Everything else listed in terms of projects is being held constant throughout this update. The only thing that changes is whether or not we do a full portion of Carruthers Parkway or if we separate the two pieces by north and south. And I'll get to that here in just a moment. Lauren, real quick, I'll just jump in. When you look at that list on page three, we have bid most all of these projects. The only exceptions would be phase two of Hillsborough Road, the Public Works actual facility project, uh, you know, the update of, and, and uh, modifications of the facility. That will be bid in January. We've, we've bid the road, but not the, the building work. Uh, Eastern Flank we just awarded. Um, the, the Harlandsdale work that we anticipated is all in, in process at this point. Um, and then, uh, then the Century Court Beasley connector still is, is yet to be done. 
the rest of them have all been bid awarded and are are, are in the process of, of going if they're not going already not the additional design. Not that design. that's not just additional design work but the construction projects that's not a construction oh, project that's no. design only right. okay. go ahead Lauren I just wanted to touch on that can you hear us Lauren Lauren, can you hear us? Can you hear you? No. no, she can't hear us. We can't okay, read the coming. <laughs> <laughs> it did sound like she was breaking up at the end of her. Lauren, I'll call you right back. He's awake. She can see us. Oh, technology. <laughs> Okay. She might be in Memphis. She says she's at Sunny FM. Maybe we're yeah. wrapping. Ask her if it's sunny. End of year. <laughs> I don't. I don't want her to rub it. Yeah. <laughs> it was sunny here earlier. That's okay. I can hear you now. I'll put you back on speaker. Okay. Sorry about that. No problem. All right. Um, go ahead. Talk about Carruthers Parkway. Is that fair, Eric? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, as I alluded to, we did three different scenarios as it relates to this project. And I will tell you that I probably should have jotted these numbers down somewhere on this page because when you see the next few slides, it is snapshots actually from the model in which that's why they don't have page numbers. And it's a lot of numbers in a lot of different places, of which only one line item actually changes, and it's related to the Carruthers Parkway project. Um, the scenario one we ran was the complete project was completed. Um, and that is at $13.7 million. Scenario 2, which is the north portion, is only the portion that we ran in Scenario 2, and that's at $5.8 million. And then number 3 is the south portion only, and that total is $7.9 million. And as you, well, I'm going to flip to the next few pages, and it's a lot of numbers, but I would probably just direct your eye to line 7, which is project number 7, and that's where you see Carruthers Parkway. Everything else is the same, right? That's correct. Bless you. So I, I wasn't going to spend a lot of time on these, but just show you that this is scenario 1, in which row 7 is Carruthers Parkway, the complete portion at 13.7. Scenario 2, which is the north portion only, which is at $5.8 million in row 7. And then rounding out the scenarios was number 3 for the south portion only at $7.9 million. So I'm going to give you a whole lot more numbers to look at. Um, I'll try to point you in the direction of kind of getting to the point of what the impact is from these multiple scenarios. I'm also going to zoom in for you all and in the room if you're looking at it on the screen. I hope I'm not cutting anything off, um, but it's also helpful for me. Um, I, there, what you see in this regard is that the it goes in the same order in which we ran them. The blue portion is the complete portion, the green portion, the right is north, the red portion is the south portion only. I, I didn't plan to go through each one of these numbers, but kind of draw our eyes to specific facts and numbers that we have in this, these, these tables to understand the difference when looking at these three um, different ideas of how you do those approach this project. And looking at the cumulative new debt service, which is probably right smack in the middle of the table, if I were to describe it, and kind of fast forward all the way to 2016 in any one of these scenarios in which you've accumulated, taken on all the debt associated with all projects approved, um, based on updated construction fund numbers, the ones that uh, I've been up the ones that Eric spoke to, and just focusing on the, the amount of magnitude that this project has, whether it be the complete portion, the north portion, or the south portion only. So looking at the cumulative new debt service for the Carruthers Parkway, the complete project is approximately $2,262,172. And 
comparison to the Corona Parkway just the north portion at cumulative new debt service all the way to 2016, that, that number of $1,928,114. So the difference between those two is approximately $334,000. If you were going to compare the complete project to the south portion only, the south portion being a little bit more expensive, and the cumulative new debt service being approximately in 2016, $2,089,013, the difference between those two is approximately $173,000. So I also have a slide after this that just puts it in some of these metrics in a bar format, bar chart format. Uh, Eric, Russ, I don't know if it's helpful for me to go there or if you want me to stay here because there's a lot of numbers yeah. of which it, it, it doesn't matter to me. I, I visually I like the bar charts, but I'll, I'll yeah. stay wherever I, you want me to. <laughs> I think there are some questions unless you want to go through that last piece and then come back to them or however you yeah, want to do it. Well, maybe we, let me show the bar charts and let me show you kind of the, the, what maybe the end result here is and then we'll come back to that. Is that okay. okay? Okay? Sure. So, I'm going to zoom out a little bit here because we don't have as many numbers. And I'll try to make sure my screen, I don't lose too much of the data here. Hold on one second, bear with me. So speaking to the cumulative new debt service that I referenced in the slide before they actually had the data, you can see that the cost comparison versus blue, which is the first bar chart of complete projects versus north versus south, <clears throat> as well as all of the debt service as a percentage of the budget. And, and I think, while I think these are helpful, the, 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 the comparison of the three are very, very, it's hard to... Um, uh, visually, you can see it, but it's not a, a huge impact. I think that I, I wanted to give you all an update as to if you think back to why we go through this process in the first place, it really relates to the metrics that you all established through a debt management policy. And can you go this route with a complete project, and how does it impact your um, debt ratios versus just doing a portion north or south. So that's the next slide. So let me end there and then I'll certainly open it up for questions and go back to any of the information that you would like me to. So comparing the three scenarios versus full project or the completed project or the north or south portion alone, you end up in terms of the, the, the metrics that you have put in place for yourself to, to monitor throughout the um, evaluation of capital projects and any debt associated with them, you end up in the same place. Um, in fact, visually on a bar chart, we were struggling to even see the differences um, between scenarios one, two, and three, and so we went back to the, the, this table in which we presented to you all in the past, and it seems to be a good kind of summary recap of, of the five, where do you end, do any of these see pressure? Obviously, the debt service as a percent of operating expenditure has been a, a, a ratio in which we've not been in compliance with in the past, and obviously, as the expenditures have been cut, we just become even more out of compliance. Um, so I, I will end. This is based off of the 13 budget numbers, the $55 million budget, and I think uh, Eric was speaking to that earlier. But I, I will kind of stop and let you all ask questions. I, I will ask for your patience in that if you're far from the phone, I'm not going to be able to hear you, so we may have to have someone translate it to me at closer to the phone. And one thing to emphasize, just as you look at these numbers, that this is a debt capacity, so it takes the projects that we're using debt to pay for. So there are things like the fire station that we talked about or um, some of these other projects that are in the mix that we are paying for as we go or with cash we're not using debt to fund them so this really relates to us assuming that we're assigning debt service to these projects uh, we've also been conservative in that we have not assigned any road impact fees to this because we're looking at that fund and saying you know right now it, it needs to needs to get above the line <laughs> and so we're not assigning costs to it but you could see in the future the potential for dollars to flow from that for these types of projects but we have not applied anything from that. We've not made any assumption about the opportunity to sell property that we own, either on the hill or where Streets is today once we consolidate to uh, the site off of Columbia. 
so we've, we've, we've not made any of those assumptions that we know at some point will help us with some of this picture overall. Uh, we've been pretty conservative in that regard, and I just wanted to stress that this really hits the, the debt portion of this because that's what drives your policy. Um, and that we we've, we've, think we've done a, a good job of using other sources where we can, and, and that's what we've done. So uh, you may feel like, well, is that project in there? All the projects you approved are in there. Some are not all supported by debt, so they didn't factor in this, in this measurement at the end. <coughs> Questions? I, I know in uh, one you of our- Can uh, Alderman Scanner? What, one of our documents- uh, there was a, a, a statement about planning was evaluating uh, facilities or, or uh, road impact fees. Or how close are we to having numbers on projects that we know are being requested? Well, we, we've projected some numbers on that. Um, we've just been conservative because we don't know the timing uh, of those and so we haven't factored those in uh, we, we have some rough numbers related to certain projects it depends on timing and how quickly they happen and when that comes in so that's why we've been conservative and not really factored those in uh, Russ has done a little more closer analysis on that so. well I've looked at the product that planning came up with for example on um, Carruthers South and they were looking at a minimum of six to seven million in road impact fees coming from those projects that are somewhat in the pipeline now, excluding the commercial venture, the berry farm and, and things like that. Um, but he, as Eric said, we don't know about the timing. So uh, the prudent rule I think right now is to more or less exclude those until we're a little closer and we have a handle on those. So the, were those calculations at build out or at a certain time period? Well, they were, that was the, the total assuming a build out over 10 years. Okay. It would be incremental throughout that time period. And Did that that does not factor those projects that are further north on Carruthers that we've talked about as we've looked at that Carruthers McEwen. This is really the, the development south uh, of, uh, uh, of 96 East. Carruthers Parkway that would be along Carruthers Parkway. North of 96, we know the numbers will be very Significantly large, higher. But, but it's very hard to calculate them at this time we've until we see the plans. And we've also got significantly higher infrastructure needs potentially in that 10 to 15 year time horizon in that area. So when Russ gives that number, that's the, that's the area more in this region uh, that, that we're talking about. What, what other Alderman. project, I'm oh, sorry. I had Alderman Blanton, I'm sorry. Ahead. Just remind me the <clears throat> golden number that we shouldn't exceed again on percentage wise. Well, it varies on each one of the, of the uh, no. items 8%, in the matrix. 8, okay. 8% on the one. But on the one that where we have the red line on, the debt service as a percentage of operating expenditures. That's the one that's really looked unfavorable ever since right. 2009 when we started lacking budget. Um, and there was a considerable diminishment of the budget. That threw that number out of line. But we, we basically said in our, in our targeting that 8% eight, eight would ideally we would not want to go above. One of the things we look at too is the medians from the other AAA cities, yes. which are not, have not been updated yet, right? Lauren, can you? shed any light on on what we might know or when we might know it on that element of this you know i, I wish i could say that i know i knew Moody's was going to produce that information even by the end of the calendar year they have very much slipped um their time frames in which we usually see that come out about september mm -hmm. and i don't remember when it was when we got it for 2011 but it was very delayed um so i I'm not sure when we'll see it. As soon as we get it, we certainly pass it on to you all and look at your, to reevaluate things as needed. Um, there wasn't a material change, to be honest, between 11, 10 and 11. Um, it will be interesting to see um, how 12 plays out. I, I certainly can't speak to, you know, what I won't make any assumptions, but hopefully we'll get it. My guess is it'll be some point in February or March. Can I make a comment about those assumptions? And that is that the one that, that shows red all the time uh, is that percentage. However, I have been told that 
at least two of those other guidelines are looked upon by the rating agencies as our ability to tax more, yep. which is, to me, not the same thing. So even though we are, we, we do not show anything, any yellow or red lights, the, that, that means that, as I say, the rating agencies don't mark us down for that because, in their opinions, we could tax a lot more than we are currently taxing. When we developed the policy uh, about three years ago, we wanted to look at what the rating agencies look at in, in terms of assessing the fiscal health and the capacity and all those things of, of an entity. And so that's really where these benchmarks came from. And, and it looks at all sides of the equation. There's no question about that. And, and so we tried, to, we tried to reflect the kind of things they look at and the kind of things that you factor in when you uh, make these decisions. One of, the, one of the challenges we face, and particularly why we looked at some of the communities we looked at is, is AAA cities that were facing growth pressures as opposed to a AAA city that might be built out and doesn't have quite the demand that we do. And, and, and the one where we're hitting red is where you're going to expect to potentially see that because you've got growth in the pipeline and you're trying to meet it or, or stay up with it as best you can. And so you're, you're probably going to uh, push that area a little more compar compared to operating expenses than some other AAA cities might that, that, that have less growth pressure. So um, that's why we tried to further refine that to that group. Um, but that is, that is uh, where we were, I think, when we ran this last spring. Um, I think that the net debt per capita was a yellow. Is that correct? I didn't I, I've got pull that, that up. Or the percentage of market. The percentage of market. Okay, I knew one of the others was a yellow. Uh, and so that is tweaked a little bit based on, I think, some population growth, some of the other numbers that we talked about that that have, uh, have bolstered us over the, over the year, but. Um, can, can I say that the uh, building the entire road at that time, based on those numbers, was red, and uh, there were two yellows for, one of them was for the north segment, and the other one for, was for the south segment. Okay. Other questions? Oh, well, we just wanted to have um, other questions, period. If we are, I want to get back in the line. I just, I just want to comment about, you, Eric, you just mentioned the potential for growth, the percentage of growth was not factored in or when we did this a couple of years ago or no, it was? It was. We just have updated numbers and, we and, numbers. and there's a per capita measure in here and we just used updated numbers. We've also retired a little more debt than we had projected because of the timing lag and, and how we've done some of this and we're always conservative kind of pushing the kind of the interest rates and where we are when when we're going to really issue debt we always kind of push it maybe earlier than we might really do it just to be conservative so some of those once you factor in the reality change those ratios a little bit so population affects it where we are in terms of fund balance all those things the assumptions we made about where our budget would be once we get to real numbers it comes in a little better than what we had projected. So perhaps goes from a yellow to a green. Uh -huh. that's correct. Yeah, that's a, that was one of the things that we saw. Correct. Yeah. What, uh, on page three, when we went over these projects, which ones are not going to accumulate, we're not going to be accumulating debt besides, we've got the uh, design for the fire station and then the build out. When you, when you go down that list, that eastern flank, east, yeah. eastern flank wouldn't, fire station wouldn't, yeah. park at Harlandsdale would not, oh, park. That's right. uh, the uh, McEwen Drive, Wilson Pike to city limits, design would, uh, potentially although it's only design costs at this point, design. but the Wilson, uh, the Wilson and McEwen improvements that we've awarded, that's really a mix of the contribution from the schools and then the, right. the, the portion that the city gets from facilities tax that comes through the county. <laughs> so that's really not relying on debt either. Um, you're, you're talking, that's the McHugh and Wilson intersection. Yes, that's number five. Okay, got it. And uh, I think the rest of them we've assumed debt, although you could potentially see us do a smaller project like the, um, the Century Court Connector. I don't know if we'll fold that into a bond issue or not. That might be a judgment call we make. I think the balance of the other projects, that the two to 
three plus million, you'll see end up in a in a, a bond issue eventually. What we typically do is is get those projects awarded, get them started, and then sell the debt uh, a little later on. Like we might sell that the next time we sell debt might be next fall, maybe after we've gotten further along and the projects we're in and we have a, a better handle on everything. So possibly Century Court, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's a relatively small project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the one that could probably go either way, depending on what we want to do with it, where we are. And then we've also assigned, when you look at Hillsboro, this is really Hillsboro and the Public Works facility. We have assigned a portion of some costs to the water and sewer elements. Um, you know, the the, uh, the the beautification or streetscape elements are eligible to be paid for uh, in terms of debt service from hotel motel. So we we we've spread that out. So what you see in the model is really just what we assume is going to hit the general obligation debt portion. Where's Third Avenue Extension in this mix? That really was um, from the prior funding plan, so it was already funded and it's been factored in. And we've already borrowed that money. So make sure you weren't sliding. Yeah, anything yeah no, no, that one that one was before this plan actually. I, I just want to make sure, Mr. Mayor, from work this information we're getting on the updates. What is our goal here? What are we trying to do? We're trying to what are you wanting what are we trying to do? Are we trying to vote and change the current policy? Are we looking to move things differently? What What is the aim here? Well, all we're doing at this point is updating the financial model for you. Um, there's discussion about how you want to proceed with Carruthers South, and if you want to phase it, if so, which phase you want to do when, or if you want to try to do the entire stretch of road. And in fact, when we were going through the funding plan, that was one of the things the board challenged us on is look at the whole, tell us what that looks like too. We went ahead and did the design work because that needed to be done anyway. So we completed that design that was finished in November. We've got updated cost estimates that are reflected in here. So we're basically laying that into the model, updating everything we can in the model and showing you what that looks like if you choose a south phase, a north phase, or the entire road. Yeah. So that's really what we put on the table for you and that just gives you more information to give us directions on how you want to proceed with Carruthers South and you know if you want to and if so how you want to right. what you want to build well for me looking at all the potential growth that we just talked about this that's sort of slated for out in that area it looks majorly significant and therefore um, looking at a completed road would be where I would like to have my discussion. Can we get some more questions before we start uh, talking about that? As I say, yeah, uh, I think you're next. Uh, I don't think I had anybody else to raise their hand. Okay, and uh, I, I'm not sure I understand. It, it it looks as if what we're having to fund anew would be. Uh, Hillsborough Road and the Consolidated Public Works Facility. I, I, I need to, and this may be a question that I just asked to our staff, what, what is our current position on the Public Works Facility funding and what are we proposing now to do? Because, you know, at the time we did not borrow any money and I think at one point it was also included just in our that year's budget uh, you know it showed up there I'll put it that way so if I could get some information about how we are intending to uh, fund the public work facility the the purchase and the building out the or the working on the building the assumption all along has been that we would fund that through a general obligation uh, debt issuance which we have not done yet. Right, but what we've done, and when you made the purchase, you you approved a resolution that authorized that to potentially be right. debt funded. So you've used your essentially your cash balance to go ahead and front that money, purchase the property, get us started on the design work. We've awarded the, the access road contract. Uh, expect that we'll bid the, the facility work in probably in January. So those are all portions that, to this point, we've all assumed would eventually land in a in a, in a bond issue, be funded by a, de a bond issue. Now we have the, the luxury of having the fund balance we have helps us front some money, get projects moving, and then 
then come back and, and get debt to replace that money, essentially. Uh, and so that's, that's what we've assumed all along. You, you could take another look at that and use some cash for that and, and not use all the debt that use all of it for, for, for debt funded uh, projects, but that's really up to you and you still have that right if you'd like. Our assumption though all along has been that it would land in uh, debt funded capital. Yeah. So one, little, one little nuance I just want to touch on, it says 5.5 .5 million for the total mm -hmm. and 5 million to the general obligation. We've assumed a half million dollar contribution from water and sewer to the project. That's probably fairly conservative as well, but we felt that was fair. So I just wanted to highlight if you see those two numbers. It's a, it's a, when you look at that line, it shows 5.5 million on any one of the, the project right. breakdown sheets, but, but scenarios one, two, or three. If, if you're looking on the first unnumbered page there, that's where that is. And okay. the attachments have that as well. It just shows a breakdown that there's 5.5 .5 in total, but 5 million being assigned to general obligation debt at this point. Okay, so continuing with that then, it, it, and I'm looking just at the scenario one, you know, because that's the, we're, we're, we're talking about it and that's the first, first one. Then it appears that the additional money required for South Carruthers would be the 13, uh, 13.76. 7, mm -hmm. 13. 13.6 or yeah 76 what it okay so whenever we go over here and talk about additional debt service and in this case I guess I'm on page 8 you know that's that's now numbered again I see the additional debt service total would be 693 thousand seven hundred fifty that's in 2016 there yes. mm -hmm. so we're 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 saying then that um, that that would be if we borrowed if we borrowed another the 13 point what did we just say 13.6 or 13.7 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. but whenever you look just continuing across the page there at 2016 if we only went with borrowing the, uh, I want to say five million, I don't have that number in front of me, then that just goes down a hundred and a hundred, a little more than a hundred, I mean a hundred, hundred thousand, yeah, hundred and sixty-seven thousand, yes. that's right. Mm -hmm. So, can I make a, yes, Go ahead, t t tell us about that because that seems a lot, well, we just lost what it looks like. Are you still on the phone? Stay there. Yes. I go ahead. Okay, good. Yeah, go ahead. I think yeah. I understood the question. Let me make something very clear. Maybe I didn't on the front end. That all the other projects are also included in these numbers. The only moving part right. is whether or not you do the complete portion of South Carruthers or Carruthers Parkway, excuse me, or the north portion versus the south portion. Yeah. So the, 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 the impact is becomes smaller, it's harder to see, if you will, because it assumes that you're borrowing for the other pro the projects that are not being funded out of, you know, hotel motel tax or whatever the, the net funding needs are. The only por moving portion in this analysis is the how much you are, or how much do you approve to do for Carruthers Parkway, and in turn that correlates to how much you borrow. Does that make sense? I'm not sure if I, I Yes, I, I can understand that, but why is it just a very small amount of difference between borrowing the 13 plus million for the entire uh, Carruthers and 500,000 for the $5 million North Carruthers, only. North Carruthers part? Well, if I can take that one, the, the impact is spread over the years 14, 15, and 16. It's not all in one year, right? Because right. the Tire money will year. be expended. So there's a little. There would be a little bit added in each year, whether you do the north south or the full project. But it doesn't even look like it, though, Russell, because it's like even if you compare, if you compare Any fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen with the additional debt service in each scenario, 
there's not much difference. Well, it's in 15 and 16. Yeah, it's really just in those last two years. It's still not much difference, though. Between, and I, I don't. Well, I think it assumes a 20 year. A 20 year yeah. amortization. They, but the, the difference between, what was it, 7 million and 13 million? Yeah. Is 6 million. And if you figure it at 6.5 or $7 per hundred, of what the debt service <coughs> would be, uh, there's not a lot of incremental difference in that. Well, so in looking at this, though, we've hit all our reds, which is not good. But it looks like we'd be better served to go ahead and do the whole thing because we're only saving yes. three hundred and thirty four thousand dollars or, or expending more three hundred thirty four thousand dollars more over the long haul. That's right. You're, you're so, spending that every year for the next seven, 18 years after this. So well, that's, and if we that's can, the thing I want to be clear on, but it, it's not a huge difference, but it is. a No, but if you consider we had an extra million this year that we were able, I mean, not that that's going to happen every year, but knowing development is right behind this or it's right next to us wanting us to move. Yes. I mean, and that's not even funneled into this formula. I mean, I'm saying let's go. I agree. Well, can, can, can I, I mean, I, I, do, I, I do agree that we are looking much better than I thought we would, what, a year, from, a year ago? I certainly think that's true. But I, I still don't see how borrowing $13 million as opposed to, what, less than $6 million is going to go from 500000 to to only six hundred something thousand. I mean, it looks like you're bill you're borrowing more than twice as much. So why is not the debt service on twice as much, twice as much? It, well, it's it's accumulative. So it's it's while that element is larger, it's still part of a larger whole. Mm -hmm. So as a percentage, it's not as it's not as big. It's not that's the one thing that changes. But you've also got in your base all the other borrowing. Is it because we can't see into 2020? But, but, it, but I mean, it's all these other debt service too. It, so it, this is all part of it. it's a little. So, so as long as it's, it's not as, as big as you might think. But it looks like we're. Well, it looks like the committed projects were 14 million, and then we're adding another seven, uh, another 13 million to it. At least those are the numbers that I got. Uh, uh, the numbers that I saw here on uh, on that. The first unnumbered page. The first unnumbered page shows the five-year total of committed projects: fourteen million two hundred fifty thousand. And then down here, this is another thirteen million seven hundred sixty-two thousand. So, why is that? Why is that not? Why, why, why is the debt service on that not twice as much? We have been carrying some assumption about something on Carlisle throughout the capital program. Even like last mm -hmm. spring, we were carrying, I think, something around six million or something. We were assuming a phase, so that might be part of that. Um, but we look at the total of all the projects and run run debt service assumptions on those. You have to consider for the mathematician what the math doesn't add up to the naked eye, and That's I agree. Right. That's right. It's kind of like, hmm. well, let, let me offer you this. We can run the numbers yeah. just on those projects saying. and exclude yeah. all the others. Lauren, we could do that pretty quickly, could we not? I think if it went to triple. We could run some without a Carruthers at all. Well, I, I mean, but the okay, math. the Carruthers, oh, okay, that's right. That's right. How so, much, uh, but, but it looks. How much debt does three hundred thirty-four thousand dollars service today? Mm -hmm. Oh, somewhere in the six million. Six million, dollars. which is the swing between mm -hmm. between the a, a phase and a non-phase. Six dollars per hundred, principal and interest. But we're just saying it adds uh, one hundred sixty-seven thousand. No, no, it adds compared to compared to um, scenario. <laughs> One versus scenario, what's the least expensive? Two? Two. Yeah. Yep. That difference is $330,000. And where is that? That If you look at slide, slide eight, and you look at that cumulative new debt eight. service number, mm -hmm. and you've got that, I, I'm looking at 16 as a good benchmark, because that's when everything's loaded in. And you see 2.26 million in 2016 for all of Carruthers mm -hmm. 
you see 1.9 million for the northern portion only. That's all, again, cumulative uh, new debt service. And then when you look at the, the south, which is the more expensive of the phasing approaches, it's, it's 2.08, just under 2.1 million. So if you compare the difference between those two, you're just about $330,000 between scenario one and scenario two, which would equate to that about $6 million swing, six to $7 million swing between those phasings. Phasing and, it just occurred to me one other thing. We're going from 2012, which you know ended what six months ago. Mm -hmm. We probably should have at least gone from this fiscal year to, if we're talking five years from now, we should have gone beyond that because I see I see in one respect that we're just looking at one extra year of paying that debt service, one year of paying that debt service. Whenever we're talking about having it go on from, for years and years. But as I say, I, I, I still maybe would like to see that, and that's what the reason that I sent uh, Russ some questions to you before, you know, uh, earlier today, because I just couldn't get this to, to seem to, to me that it added up. I'm sorry if you sent those, I, d I did not see Well, them. I sent it this morning, but I can understand. But, I, but to be honest with you, we got these, what, last Wednesday? Wednesday. And this time of year, I didn't, it, it, as, as much as I, as, as interested in it as I am, I did not have time to even, I mean, I went through all of this one time. I could not, I, and what I said in there, I can't make sense of, of very much of it, uh, to tell you the truth. But I did want to see, and I did ha had mark, I had pointed out those particular numbers there, and, and still I'm interested in, in seeing, I guess you're saying here, though, that if you just got one year of it. Well couple of things. We didn't add any additional years because we wanted it to be apples to apples to what you were looking at in April to the extent possible so you could see the impact of the new numbers without adding additional years and complexity to it. Um, the other thing is you said in, in 2016 you know you don't really see what's happening in the out years but by 2016 all of the debt We'll, all of the debt will be borrowed for the project. We've assumed that it will be borrowed no later than really July of 15, so it's in the FY16 budget. Um, so that's, you, will, you are seeing the full impact after all the money will have been borrowed. And this is assuming that we are not going to add any other project other than these that we see right here. That's true. In the next, what, four years, we're not going to add another project? That I mean, that, that's what you're assuming here, right? But that's what we do at the model is we yeah. apply a group of projects over a time period to that, to that capacity model, and then you know, we update it about every year as we look at things. So well, I did notice that you did not have the Harlesdale barn down in here. I can understand that it is being paid for by Hotel Motel, but several other projects you do have in here, even though they're not going to be paid by debt service, and very honestly, uh, whenever it says, if you look across here on the uh, Harlandsdale Farm improvements, mm -hmm. it does not expect any other money. It does have the 131300 there, but it does not have the 725000 that we have already approved this year. And I would say that the expectation, at least from some areas, is that there would be more money needed for that. And as I say, I didn't. I never saw the seven hundred twenty-five thousand anywhere in you, here. You didn't because you paid that with cash. But but you that some others. outside of the capital okay. projects and, and authorized those projects, and those were paid yeah. for with basically with cash we had on hand, and we amended the budget within the fund to right. to accommodate those projects. But but on some other things because that's going to be paid by hotel motel. It's really not going to be paid right. for by. Correct. Uh, it's not going to lead to balance. general obligation that's right. anyway. That's right. Yes. However, some other things, though, that were also funded that way were included in here. That's because you approved them when you went through the capital project process. So, and, and so I we wanted to reflect what you've approved. Well, and I, then there was a specific decisions made uh, related to repairs of the barn and the house, some of which was driven by FEMA money that was coming into the project and some other things that we needed to take care of. So that really got sort of dealt with as almost like an operating capital item as opposed to a capital project. It, it admittedly kind of fell uh, outside of this process because of the, the
the need and the unique funding opportunity that need that we needed to spend the federal money within a time frame. I, I do want to say, at the time that we talked about that, I did make the comment that should have gone through capital improvements because it was it was even more than what we had planned to spend on our small projects. N not that that's right. here nor there right. here, but but again, just to say that you know if we commit to this, then it it means that we are not expecting other things because we're we're looking at our you know the numbers that we're looking at here as i say we're in a much better place than i expected us to be a year ago however i also have to say that whenever we wound up only spending 50 million dollars or even less than 50 million dollars in 2012 now whenever you look at this on the you know on the on the page again, I guess it's, that's unnumbered. It, 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 it indicates that in fiscal year that we're in right now, we're expecting to uh, increase our budget by 10%, by $5 million from what we, from what we had this past, the past year that's just ended. I mean, is that realistic? I think whenever we proposed the budget, we were planning to increase by 3.1%. Well, if, if I may, part of the reason the revenues are low is because we expected a big grant on the, uh, for the Traffic Operations Center, and they just didn't get far enough along to actually begin the work and get the bid awarded. So there was about $1.7 in grant that did not happen. That was taken out of 12, and it's been put back in 13. So it makes it... You subtract it from one, add it to the other, you've got a pretty big swing there. So that's that's a big chunk of the reason right there. Um, the revenues were actually a little bit less, but they as are. we pointed out in the audit, uh, or the auditors when they made their presentation to you, you know, the key elements of our revenues were up. Sales tax was up uh, more than we expected in the budget and more than Warren had plugged into the model. Property taxes also went, the base went up even though we were disappointed in right, some of the challenges that we had and the amount that we got, it still was above what we, the conservative numbers that we plugged into the model for slow growth going forward. So I, I wouldn't spend a whole lot of time worrying about that 55 number. Um, you know, that's what we've just been through the budget with and approved, and it seemed to be a pretty realistic number when we did that. Well, then I guess my, my other comment uh, is that we do see a great deal of growth planned for this corridor, but please keep in mind, I, d I don't know, at least for two years, maybe longer than that, our road impact fees have been in the red. They have not paid the principal and interest on the uh, amount of money that we already have borrowed. And so even though this will definitely improve, we're certainly hoping in the next few years, it still has to come back pretty far to get to the place where it is paying for what we've already borrowed. In fact, you remember we, we put some money from uh, the other debt service funds in to pay it off so that it wouldn't be so, wouldn't show up so much in the red. And, and I looked, it looked like the first four months of this year even though it's better than last year, it still does not meet what we have budgeted for the current fiscal year. So, you know, there are a lot to numbers. And as I say, I'm very pleased uh, that, that we, you know, have the, the uh, million dollars that we had not expected to have. We, in fact, it's kind of a big shift because we had expected, I believe, to, uh, to, to draw a million dollars. So that part really looks very good. But I still think that something like this should not be done kind of only looking on the rosy side and not being realistic about that. As I say, I feel much better than I, than I did a year ago or even six months ago whenever we were finishing this. But, but still, we also need to keep in mind that if we, if we make this large commitment, which is really twice as much as we had plan you know, that we had committed to, with the $14 million, an extra $13 million is, twi is, is, as I say, virtually twice that much. And, and I think that it is going to affect, number one, what we can do in our general fund. 
And secondly, that it, it, it certainly, if we are prudent, would prevent us from doing some other things that may come up in the next, what, four years. Do you give all the margin? Mm -hmm. I'm not, not going to argue about the details of this, but I think with the development that is predicted south, on South Carruthers, uh, we need to be proactive instead of reactive, and it's going to take years to get it done. I think we ought to start now. I think we ought to do the whole thing. And if we don't have enough money, I think we ought to raise taxes. I think we have, we have prided ourselves on either lowering or keeping taxes at what they were. I do not think that's smart. If we had raised taxes a little bit along the way, we might not need them so badly right now. But I'm not opposed to that. And I think that this, if that's where the development is going, we need to prepare for it. Things are not going to get any less expensive. They're going to be more every year. And I don't think we ought to put it off. Alderman Skinner. I, I agree with uh, um, Alderman Martin that, uh, you know, there was some years ago that it was kind of embarrassing because our infrastructure lagged so much behind our project. We have an opportunity now to go ahead and provide in front of some of these projects and prepare for them. Um, you know, we, we talked uh, some years ago in, in 2008 how much uh, sales tax revenue we had lost. But we also had lost generated uh, uh, building fees and, and, and facilities and, and all those things because the, the, the building had gone to nothing. Now we're hearing from the developers. They are trying to purchase land. They are trying to make plans. So th this is not a, a what if. This is, this will happen. It's just whether or not we get prepared for it. And, and that's what's important now, is get in front of, of, of these developments and, and do the infrastructure and do the planning. Because I think the, the money and revenue will, will help <coughs> offset of many of the things that we're worried about now. And it, it, it won't come overnight, but it will come over years. And that's, that, that's probably as, as sure a thing as, as we can bet on now. Let's see, Alderman Berger and then Alderman Branch. Um, I totally agree with you, Mike. I, you know, uh, you talked about infrastructure uh, lagging behind development. We don't want to do that again because we've already done that previous boards and um, planning commissions have allowed and our boards in the past have allowed the biggest example of that is McEwen where we are right now and what a mess we we will have if we do not address the design and the construction of McEwen phase four it's critical because we um, we finished uh, phase three at, at, at the six at the four lanes and, and that's accommodating now and it's doing well we went ahead, we had foresight to go ahead and just bite the bullet and do Carruthers. That is just jam-packed over there at rush hour right now. And um, we're going to have even more of it. Of course, we're doing the studies to say what we need to do in the future over there in that corridor. Because that corridor is so critical to our businesses and our corporations that come in here, I'm all for Carruthers. I think that this is a smart thing to do to get out ahead go hand in hand with development that's already happening there going to happen getting ready I mean the birth pangs are there I mean we've got to get it going but we cannot sacrifice uh, McEwen because when you talk about infrastructure you know getting it out ahead of development I have people over there that say y'all looking at these other areas in town and that is so critical and they agree it is critical to get out ahead of development or with in tandem with development at the same time we cannot ignore it we cannot let it slide we cannot let that go by the wayside because that's part of this whole model that we're looking at the Lauren's talking to us about we've got to find a way to get McEwen phase four finished we've got it we've got to get that design and um, we are doing those two projects starting next month, the connector and, and the um, intersection down there at Wilson, which is great. Yep.
we've got a whole section in between there and we have you know I don't want to sound like a broken record but you all know we've got the school out there we've got all the development we have McKay's Mill we have Meet of Avalon we have Avalon we have Breezeway we have Ashton Park we have all those areas out there and it's busting at the seams and we've got to make sure that we do this in tandem with this as well so wherever we can find the money we have to make sure that we pace ourselves and get that on 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 here now so I just want to remind everybody where we're going with this and uh, I totally support Carruthers but we have to totally support McEwen Ford uh, my comment in this scenario the 500,000 that we kept in uncommitted is that still a part of this scenario no no it's not okay so because the, the statement came up there may be new things coming up and we live in a dynamic world here and there will be in the next four years I can't sit here and say that there will not be something that I'm very attracted to that may not come up and will benefit this city so um, maybe we just need to look at and, and we will look mm -hmm. at capital projects again first part of next okay. year we're, we're gonna keep looking at them just so that we're keep them in mind and know what's important yeah. uh, we will always look at the financial capacity along with our our want list our priority list and see how far we can go and what capacity if any is there yeah. and um, you know so that that will happen yeah. just okay. just so you know because we can't forget about the projects that are in you know, still under consideration and, and what those benefits are as well. Uh, but we'll always look at capacity and we've been in this place every time we've done a funding plan where we kind of look at how far we can go uh, and then update it, uh, you know, each time we go through it and see where, what we can get done. Alderman Peters. Please keep in mind, we just talked about in the last two months, the part of North Carruthers that is north of McEwen, mm -hmm. which you know, I have, I, it seemed whenever that was brought up mm -hmm. that that may be something that uh, is is uh, is some work that needs to be done fairly quickly too. And I, you know, of course, we haven't looked at any numbers or anything mm -hmm. like that. But still, that that is a I would think a fairly large project mm -hmm. that uh, that will be coming right away. It's okay, good. Okay. <laughs> we doing this. Warren's still with us. Yeah, thanks, Lauren. Lauren. <laughs> Unless you have a closing comment other than Merry Christmas and Bah Humbug. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> you stole it. <laughs> That's Th how they do it all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Lauren. Thank you. Jeremiah. I'd like to thank you, Jay, for. Yeah, thank you. Making yeah, it work. Thanks. That's very nice, very convenient. We could so, so I have a question. What is the next step on the decision yeah. for South Carolina? Yeah. Well, we could we can put some we can put a specific resolution on for January eighth for you to authorize the whole road, a south phase, a north phase. You know, we can do a fill in the blank if you'd like. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, want to I want to talk about that now. That's want, your next official I, voting meeting. Oh, I want to get, Mr. Mayor, I want to get a consensus okay, here of what everyone's thinking. Are we, are, are, you know my are opinion. the other aldermen, <laughs> I know you're, you're thinking do the whole thing, yeah. get it done, do the two lanes, grade it out for four, build the two. Mm -hmm. uh, That's where I think. Good. Are you? Yep. Good with that. Consensus. Vice Mayor. Yeah. <laughs> Been very Vice Mayor. Mayor. I'm undecided. Yeah. <laughs> information well, and how uh, about you yeah. we know when the um, uh, facility what are you doing I'm please deciding. facility will be bid. uh did you say we, what facility the, the, the public works public works yeah. facility that'll be bid in january at some we just don't know the we exact don't know date. exact date that's a that's a um gosh a couple million dollars it's not a huge project in the grand oh, scheme of things change. compared no but compared to the 13 million dollar project you're talking about it's okay. it's not going to probably move the needle uh, even if that comes in a little higher than we're projecting uh, which I, I don't know that it will but it just we've got that one to do um, I don't know that you'd need to wait to bid that one um, I don't think you can wait to bid uh, the second phase of Hillsborough which probably won't happen till the summer uh, if you're interested in moving uh, Carruthers forward but that you know that's up to you in terms of timing 
how close are we to being able to I bid to Carruthers? Design. What's what's the lead time in your guys' mind what's to do that? What's the lead time on Hillsboro? Hillsboro. So when's the design for McEwen going to get done? Three to four months before we'd have a, a, a bid back for award on Carruthers? Right. Basically, once so we have a north versus south, we can start our bidding process. Final, final bid documents and start the process. Oh. It's like, well, yeah. So, so, so to answer your question on Hillsboro, we're, we're dependent on authorization from TDOT because of the TDOT funding involved. We're estimating June, July, I think, was the last. Yeah, actually, we were going to wait until phase hmm. one started coming to completion, and then we would look at rolling out bidding with phase two right after phase one. Hmm. Getting ready to do that. So, Please, please keep in mind that that has the last time I looked 16 million 16,000 vehicles per day whereas Carruthers has 3,000 <coughs> yes all right so it may have three me it may have three whatever you say 3,000 a day <laughs> But it's going to have as many as everything else does with all that development down there. And I'll bet you money that How much? if it's thirteen thousand dollars <laughs> this year, it'll be twenty six thousand. Yep. I mean twenty six million next year. If it's thirteen million today it's in a year it'll be yeah. twenty six how much did you bet? I'll take that on a contingency fee. I follow. I had no paperwork. And I did the same thing. It was a long meeting. And it wasn't on power. The Simmons Ridge as well. We can have people working on in the entire corridor of Carruthers and cutting down on traffic around town for people coming in and out of here from other places that can actually move here. And I would like so to So that would be a help. You want to talk about movement of traffic? Well, Let's get them here. I would <laughs> yeah. so I would say every time I walk in here. I would like to think we can do more than one thing at one time, so we could do a couple we're, things. We're, we're multitaskers here. Are we done? Oh, well, it's uh, ready to discuss more. We're going to bring to you a resolution on January eighth. No, let's not drag this out. To authorize <laughs> what you want us to do. <laughs> we we you pretty well heard it, Eric. You pretty well heard it. Four lines. I have. A, I, I think I know where you're going. Yeah. So. We'll write it up. That's the whole. Yeah. Great, write it out for the. Yeah. Now I want to know when the design money is coming for phase four. When do we put? When do we? It's get in the there. Design?